Hey guys, Andrew here from Aloha Quails. Today's video isn't really a quail video as such, it's more of a vlog style video. Um, I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about myself, my family, and uh, how we got involved in the quail revolution. So, I moved here 11 years ago from the United Kingdom. I met my wife, Melody, playing computer games online. and. She came and visited me, I came and visited here, and fell in love with it and never left. Um, since then, we've had a beautiful daughter, Alison. She's currently nine years old. And we started off with the sort of urban homesteading thing, um, purely by mistake, really. Um, it wasn't an intentional thing as such. Um, we started off with a few chickens and the main reason was my wife's father got sick and was having a hard time eating and breathing and um, it was an ongoing medical problem. So we got the, e the chickens to lay some eggs so that he could have fresh eggs every day. We knew where they were coming from and that's kind of how it started. Well, my daughter was talking to a lady at a pumpkin patch that we went to and she said she had some ducks that were laying eggs and that if you incubated them, they would turn into ducks. So of course my wife goes, yeah, we can do that. Let's take a couple. So the lady gives them to my wife. We bring them home. We phone around some friends and we find an incubator through a friend of a friend's friend. Um, and we borrowed it to hatch our ducks on the condition that we take some adult chickens from them. So we ended up with three tabletop bantam chickens and hatched out the ducks. So we ended up with three bantam chickens, three full size chickens and two ducks. So we were getting, you know, six, seven, eight eggs a day. Um, and we were selling our extras to our friends and neighbors, um, not to make money, but just to sort of cover our food costs and use up our excess rather than sort of not wasting we would never waste them we would feed back the excess to the ducks and to the chickens and they would love it um, but there was a better use for them so we were covering our food costs and everything from that and then I was talking to the guy at the feed store one day uh, about quails um, I can't remember for the life of me how we got onto the conversation um, it might have been that he raised quails for eggs and at some point I apparently asked to buy some from him. So we went and we bought one of those cheap $20 incubators from Amazon. Um, went back to him a week later and got, I want to say 10 or 12 eggs from him and put him in this incubator. And after three weeks, we ended up with some quails. So when we got the quails, we had already got rid of the bantams because they had stopped laying. We had lost a chicken to a car accident because chickens don't know how to cross roads. Um, so we had these quails and it was just crazy like how fast they grew and how many eggs they started laying in such a short amount of time. So we had an incubator, we had some quails that were laying eggs. So of course the next step was to incubate more eggs. Um, we took the incubator to my daughter's school, put the eggs in it, and we gave them eggs to hatch. And it was great. The kids loved seeing them, you know, go from an egg to a chick. And then I took them home. I put them in my brooder. A few weeks later, I brought them back so they could see how fast they were growing. And then we took them back right at around eight weeks. And whilst they were in the classroom, the quails that they hatched laid their first egg. So that was an amazing experience for the kids because they went from egg to laying an egg in one school term. It was, it was just a phenomenal experience for them. And it was just so joyful for us and for them and for everybody. So we started doing that on a regular basis. I think every kid in my daughter's grade that year had quails hatch in their classroom at some point. Um, so of course I had all of these quails. Uh, I think we ended up with about 30 or 40 quail in the first sort of seven or eight months that we started doing this. It was crazy. So at that point I had all these eggs and I started selling them, um, just not making money. Again, it was just covering the food costs. And that was when we sort of discovered homesteading as such. Um, I think the first person I really watched with the homesteading videos was Wrangler Star. And I'm one of those people, like, when I'm working on my computer, I will 
leave YouTube running and what happens is it just auto plays. So it was auto playing and then the next thing you know I'm on a Justin Rhodes video. And that got me. Um, I can't remember what video it was. I would love to tell you the first video I watched of his and be able to say that this is what made my life change. Um, but I can't. But it was a video and then the next thing you know I'm going back to the beginning of his channel and I watched every video he'd made up until at that point. So I mean I watched, I can't tell you, I think I watched like 40 videos one after the other over a period of a couple of days. Um, and then I started looking at other homesteaders, I looked at Doug and Stacy and a few others and I was like I, I like this, I want to do this. Um, but in Hawaii it's a little bit of a problem because land's really expensive. So what I did was I went to my wife and I went upstairs and we was laying in bed one night and I flicked on the Apple TV that we had and I put it on YouTube and I said, hey, watch this guy. And I flew, I think I put on, um, I want to say the Justin Rhodes 30 days of food video and we watched every one of them and then we watched other YouTubers and then we watched more YouTubers and then the next thing you know we're not watching TV anymore all we're watching is homesteaders and um, that those kind of videos on YouTube and my wife was like we can do some of this um, and that's what we did was we started looking at things we can do so we already had animals um, I live on a 3300 square lot in a city um, there's a city ordinance that prohibits me from having more than two chickens. But that being said is there's no ordinance that prevents me from having quails. There's no ordinance that prevents me from having rabbits. Um, I can't have pigs as we found out the one year that I ended up with a pig. Um, we managed to keep it at our house for almost a month before one of the neighbours worked out what we were doing and flipped their lid and that pig went to uh, the cooker really quick. Um, and yeah, it was delicious. Um, but there's things that we can do. We have fruit trees, we have a mango tree, we have a tangerine tree, we've planted a small garden. I've experimented with hydroponics, I've experimented with aquaponics. Um, and we realized that we can do these things where we are. And from there we want to grow and, you know, the pipe dream is at some point is to maybe leave Hawaii, move to a state that's a little more free, be able to have some land and become more sustainable. Um, you know, it's something that we want to work towards. A big part of that is, you know, getting debt free. We're almost there. We have very little debt. We're very, very lucky that my wife's family is from here. Um, so we don't have the bills that somebody moving here from another state would have. Um, you know, but the cost of living in Hawaii is high. I mean, my electricity bill just for my house is $300 a month. My water bill is $150 a month. The sewage fee on that is $90. I spend $60 on water and $90 paying somebody to take my poop away. It's crazy. Um, you know, a gallon of milk is $8. A loaf of bread is $6. If you go to the store and you buy eggs, you're looking at 4 to $5 for a dozen. It's, it's just, it's mind blowing. And that's what happens when you live on an island and you're a prisoner and you have to have 80 to 90% of your food shipped in on a boat. They can charge what they want and there's nothing you can do about it except leave or cry. Um, but we found that niche that we can do. We're, we're making our own food. Um, we take our, you know, we're frugal to some degree. You know, we still eat out, we still enjoy doing that, but we take our leftovers and we turn them into something else. Just this week, we took our turkey bones from Thanksgiving and we made bone broth and I canned it all. I, I made, you know, I think 30 pints of uh, bone broth, which will last us six months. Um, and then at that point, we'll have more. It's, it's just one of those things that I've fallen in love with this idea that we can be better. And I'm not some tree hugger hippie. I like my technology. I like my gas burning car. I like my electricity. I like my plumbed in house, you know. Um, but that being said is the appeal of growing your own food and being free is, is just something that we have to do as a people. 
Um, you know, I think it's crazy when my neighbors look at me funny when I'm collecting quail eggs in the morning. Um, and I'm like, well, you know, you have a huge yard in front of your house. Why don't you have a garden? And it's, you know, it comes down to they don't want to put the work in. They don't think it's right. They'd rather have a lawn. They'd rather have pretty flowers than be able to go outside and get something to eat whenever they want it. We, you know, Hawaii, we can grow year round. You guys have probably picked all of your fruit and vegetables already. I'm picking tomatoes. I have red tomatoes on my plants at my house right now and it's December. You know, this is the perfect growing environment. I can grow greens year round. I can plant vegetables almost any time I want and they come to, to fruit. Um, sometimes it takes a little longer because we do get a little colder, um, but most of the time I can plant anything and it will grow. I can grow mangoes, I can grow papayas, I can grow tangerines, um, I can grow pineapples. It's just, it's just amazing living here for what you can grow where you are. Um, the, the thing about it is, it's just land is a premium, as I said, is, it's just mind blowing. Wow, it's easy to get caught up in the moment. So, I hope you guys um, took something away from my story, I guess. Um, I know it's a little bit long-winded and it's not for everybody, so if you stuck around, I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be making more YouTube videos. I'm going to try and go a little bit more structured and do a little bit more vlogging as well, um, get the family involved.